What was happening around you and the streets around you as this was all going down? Absolute pandemonium. From my viewpoint up 43 floors, I could see people running like ants, just absolutely scurrying for their lives. Billows of smoke coming through the streets, just walking down the street, just pushing everybody back. And then several minutes after, it looked like it had just snowed over the entire area. Yeah, the, the, the debris, the soot was thick on the street. You, there's still a, a dusting of it out here. Uh, but but when, I, when I was standing here and, and the towers collapsed, we, we saw police officers running for their lives, screaming, get back, get back, get back. And I'll tell you, that's a wake-up call when you see cops running for their lives. And people, too, women's pushing baby carriages, that sort of thing. Well, you had the first tower first. That one, When that first went down, it just pushed everybody back. And it was a good 15 minutes before the second tower finally right. collapsed. Yeah. And it was just overwhelming. And by that point, it was just insane. Well. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of similar stories from people who were inside the building. One gentleman we spoke to earlier today, John, uh, was on the 77th floor and said it was a relatively orderly evacuation at that point after the first plane hit the first tower. Everyone going down the stairs, not a lot of panic. But when they got to the sixth floor, he says they felt a second shake. And that, then people started to really be concerned. Uh, obviously, there were uh, people uh, in the building at the time of this, and, and some of those people. Uh, they haven't recovered them yet, and, and that's a, a big issue right now, is trying to get the, the rescue workers and, and the emergency crews to the building. There were police officers there and emergency crews there uh, when this was all happening, and, and they were right at ground zero when it all went down. So can we talk to you? Sir? What's your role out here right now? Uh, I'm just standing by right now. can't say what role I'm playing right now. Well, it, 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 there's a lot of standing by. There's also concern that some of these other buildings might actually come down. This building right here with the glass uh, that you see, this the nearest tall building, uh, that has structural damage as well. Uh, we saw a lot of glass broken out, and a corner of the building appeared to be uh, in distress, and there's concern that there might actually be another collapse uh, of that building. And I can also tell you that when we, were, when we first got here, we were a few blocks up, we could actually see debris from one of the planes on the street. A huge gear at one point uh, looked like a piece of an engine at another point. So that debris is still littering that area up there. They had roped it off with police tape, and they had FBI agents out there, and that was just before the first tower came tumbling down. And yet Rick fails to get a shot of that important material. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying the whole thing, the entire collapse and everything was fake. I'm saying that they intermixed a lot of footage with stuff that was done on the set and we can see that there's actors here being used just by the way that they're talking the scripted out language and the lack of knowledge of what's going on because they're standing standing by just like he says so in order for that to take place there has to be a beforehand knowledge of that this was going to happen so keep that also in mind and everyone went running away. So there's evidence out here. There's a lot of work left to be done. And uh, as you can imagine, the streets are, are a bit chaotic at this point. But I just want to show you one, one drastic uh, 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 difference looking north as opposed to looking south. Blue skies, uh, clear streets, not, about, not a lot going on over there. But then come back around this way, Dan, and uh, you'll see just uh, smoke billowing from the scene. Uh, still, obviously, uh, a major disaster waiting to be cleaned up. Back to you, John. All right, Rick Leventhal in Lower Manhattan. Thank you very much. A, a dark day in America, September 11th, 2001. But we have one more person that you might recognize from other events that was at 9-11 that day. You know, guys, if that's happening, we got to get that all out of here. I want you to compare these two years. Now, 
take in consideration the angles are different from the heads. One is a side view, one is a forward view, full on view. And also the one on the left is of this person when they were a child. So there's less of effect of the pulling down from heavy earrings uh, on the lobe and the uh, outer edge of the ear. So keep this in mind when you're looking at these images. Here are some more for you to view. Can we do that anymore? No! What's in my previous videos, we've established that this person is the same individual that appears in this video. Keep in mind, in the same video, you have Tony Greenberg, which is a relative of this person, and Stuart Rhodes, who is the founder of the Oath Keepers. In this photograph, that's a few years old, we see him sitting next to his cousin, Arden Vole, who played the Nurse Nyira character that got us into the Gulf War. I'm going to testify in front of Congress about the babies being pulled from incubators and left on the floor to die. In addition to the Nurse Nyira character, she plays the host of a TV show on Press TV Network. Here she is sitting next to her aunt, Jill Rappaport, from the Today Show. That's Jill's stage name. Her real name is Liz Harmon. And then, of course, sitting next to Arden is her mother, Denise Vole, who is a well-known New York socialite. You might also recognize her from the Columbine incident. She played the teacher that was paralyzed. Now Arden's not the only relative to appear in this video. There's a few other notable individuals involved in this production. Remember the last video we just talked about from 9-11 with this guy? Well, here he is again. This is Richard Cohen. Richard Cohen is the president of the Southern Poverty Law Center. You might ask, why does his earlobes look different? Well, this is because he's had a simple 30-minute procedure that's done in a doctor's office, which is done under a local anesthetic, where they cut a small piece of the earlobe out, a wedge shaped, and then they stitch it up with two stitches. It's a earlobe reconstruction that a lot of people do when, they're, uh, when their earlobes sag as they get older will make you look younger, which he's done right here. The important part to look at is still the inside of the ear, the landmarks that don't change. The earlobe doesn't have any cartilage in it, so it's a very simple procedure to do. You're in and out, and there's no pain whatsoever. So that's why his ears don't look the same on the outside, but on the inside they look exactly identical. Plus, look at his nose and look at the rest of his face. The landmarks of the face match exactly. He's wearing a hat that looks like it has one of the fake wigs in it that, uh, has the blonde hair, or he could have dyed his hair, who knows, but that's a question that maybe we should ask him. We also have exposed that organization as a front and a scam, as other individuals like Mark Potok are also played by Pima County Sheriff's actors. And of course, Andrew Breitbart. Now, Breitbart was the one that released those 4,000 emails showing the connection between MoveOn.org and these individuals and Soros. I think that was a ploy to get you to trust in him so then they could use him as another way of disseminating false information. The price of gold now! Almost two thousand dollars! It's gone up! Do you hear that little voice in the background say for an ounce? Here, listen again. It's gone up! It's gone up! That's Arden Vole. That's a voice that they added in in post-production the same way they did with that riot scene in the beginning. Listen again to the voice in the background complaining. So I guess Arden's putting her NYU film school degree to use. Because that's definitely Arden's voice. Up $600 an ounce this year. Keep rising. And it's going to keep rising as long as we have bailouts. As long as we have quantitative easing, as long as our government keeps spending our money. Every dollar the government takes in federal taxation. Now this is the person that I want you to really focus on. Remember the ears back in the beginning that I showed you? One of the sets is hers. She is Lady Gaga.
Now, not only is Lady Gaga here, but there is another individual that ties us into who Lady Gaga really is. Of course, it makes sense once you find out that she's related to all these people that are in this shot. Most of them in this shot are cousins, or they're related closer than that, brother and sister. But it shouldn't come as a surprise. I mean, look at the nose. The nose runs in the family. Denise, Arden, and her. I mean, let's not forget her grandfather, who gave her that nose. Marie Strong was exiled from Canada. And again, we see the Canadian connection. He now lives in Switzerland, but has since had his nose redone, so he doesn't have that pronounced feature. But even though this is not the most shocking part that I want you to realize, for the shocking part is actually who Lady Gaga really is. As you can see her with her brother here, and see her in her earlier photographs of her and her brother, you realize that she is Jean Benet Ramsey. And you can see how that story could easily be put into the media and, of course, with their media assets as being who they are. They own all the networks. They can control that story and get that story out and make it stick. But, of course, they're playing a game here with us. That's why they're winking and just having a good old time because they think they got away with it. No, they didn't. Now, you would ask the obvious question of why would this individual be yelling about down with the Federal Reserve and be pushing this agenda that, of course, we know the whole organization here is backed by Soros and of course Greenberg and Strong and all the other families that are from that area that have all the money that are backing Soros's projects. Well it makes perfect sense when you actually listen to what he's saying. And I'll get into the entire details of why and how they're doing this and for what reason in a next video which will sum it all up for you and show you who exactly is involved at the top. But I'm going to show you who's involved at this level and show you the next level of why it's being allowed and how it's being allowed. And that'll come up here shortly. But first, let me explain what this person is saying. He wants to bring down the Federal Reserve. No, he doesn't. But he'll say that anyway because he knows nothing's going to happen out of this whole organization, out of this whole move-on based protest. So what will happen? What he's saying at the end of this statement is what he really means. And this is what the family wants. They want to stop the president from being the only one that's in control. Now, they have Obama in office. They put him in office through, of course, the Nazi connections and all that that this whole family comes from. Of course, the Bushes are involved in that as well. So they put in Obama, who is basically a puppet. They control this puppet, but they know that the end of this puppet is going to come soon. And in any case, they are ready for it. That's why they're pushing this so much, because they know that if anybody like Ron Paul gets in office, they lose that total control of the entire United States and the money that comes in and goes out of it. So therefore, if you listen to what he's saying at the end, he's saying he wants the individual states to be in control of the individual's money, the individual territory of that state to be in charge and get the taxes and fund that state. Well, what that means, basically it's easier for them to buy a governor or buy a mayor or to buy whoever they need at that level. They have most of the sheriffs. They replaced the sheriffs as per about a year ago. If you recall, there was a mass replacement of all the sheriffs. They all resigned and or were forced out and then were new sheriffs were brought in. So you can see these new sheriffs that were brought in were in bed totally with this family. That's how they can get away with a lot of the things that they're doing on that level. When you look at that and you understand what they're trying to do, they know that their end is going to come when it controls this country, when it comes to being able to buy the presidents. So they want to make sure that they continue their control, and they do so on the lower level of the governors of each state. Now they have Janet Napolitano in there right now for the Homeland Security Chief. I want you to look at this last section here. I want you to compare these two and see if you think they're the same person. Because this is what's going to shock you even more about how they're doing this. Because remember, there is a suspicious lack of any presence when it comes to Homeland Security at any of these events. And like the Giffords event or any of the drills that are being played to us as real there is a lack of that one agency, that overall agency that governs the rest. Now we know with the Giffords that they were in charge of that 
because we see the X plan that was put in place, and that's Homeland Security owned and operated. But now check this out. Just like I did with the other video, I'm going to just show you a portion of this person's face so you can see the evidence without having any predetermined notions of who this person is. Now this person's identity they were trying to hide by manipulating that tooth digitally in post-production. In a previous video that I did exposing Anthony Moore Jr., the person that is the Pima County Corrections Officer that was playing the spot of the delinquent student loan person that got raided, he also is Sergeant Sham that we see in the Occupied Movement. We saw in the video with him the digitally enhanced mouth which would were showing the gaps between the teeth and how those gaps moved around and in some cases they disappeared completely. That means it was done in post-production. As we can see in here, this tooth has been digitally enhanced and it has been put in here in post-production because it does not match the background image. It moves independently of it and the bit mapping, which is caused by a double JPEG effect when it's saved out, is quite apparent. So this has been manipulated to try to hide this person's identity. Now this is Stuart Rhodes and remember Rhodes was the one that threatened me on Joyce Riley's show. He uh, is upset at me because of the fact that I exposed him and his organization, the Oath Keepers, as one being a fraud that they are. And, and the fact that they were backing the court site Jennifer like Jones event, and I exposed them right as well. Everything that Stuart Rhodes has been involved in is a fraud. And, of course, the Oath Keepers and Sheriff Mack is one of those as well. When you see Rhodes talking and you see Brandon Lee Pittman walking in the background, just like I said before, whenever you see Brandon, you know something's up then you know something's up with Stuart Rhodes. And remember how I exposed the Southern Poverty Law Center as being a, a family member of the Greenbergs? Well, it seems that Mark Potok has always been the nemesis of Stuart Rhodes as they always appear together on the news. Well, you wonder why. Listen to what Stuart Rhodes says about Department of Homeland Security and the organization known as Southern Poverty Law Center. And then keep that in mind when you watch the next clip. The Southern Poverty Law Center now sits on the working group for countering violent extremism at DHS. Well, then when I found this next video, this is what sealed the deal. Stuart Rhodes is not who he says he is, but I'll let him tell you who exactly he is. Hi, I'm Assistant Secretary Todd Kyle. For the second year in a row, President Obama has proclaimed December Critical Infrastructure Protection Month. The proclamation reaffirms the President's and this administration's commitment to critical infrastructure security and your efforts and our partners to implement innovative security practices, regionalization, resilience, and information sharing. A copy of the proclamation can be found on the DHS website at dhs.gov slash critical infrastructure. We have recommitted to spreading the message about the importance of critical infrastructure security and highlighting some of the important initiatives underway. These initiatives range from improved information sharing, our regional approach to securing interdependent critical infrastructure, and basing our budget and planning process on risk. We're going to use this proclamation as an opportunity to get word out about IP's activities and exciting new initiatives using social networking tools. We're using Twitter, and blogs to get the information about critical infrastructure security to a much broader audience. Keep following our web page, Twitter posts, and key speeches so that you stay informed about all of the activities in infrastructure protection. I also need to hear from you. So let me get this straight, Todd. You're the Assistant Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security in charge of the infrastructure of the United States. And yet, at the same time, your fictitious name your E. Stuart Rhodes is the founder of an organization such as the Oath Keepers that is pushing for and trying to instigate the population into civil unrest because they are saying that our civil liberties are being attacked by our federal government. So in fact, you are the domestic terrorists. You, the Homeland Security Office, are domestic terrorists the ones that are funding these events with our taxpaying dollars so you can create this illusion that makes these people of this country think that we're in a state of crisis just so you can come in and line your pockets with more taxpayers dollars
If you find any of this video helpful, please consider donating to WellAware1.com. You can do so by visiting WellAware1.com and clicking on the donation link at the top. As you see, your money is used to fund videos like this that expose the liars and the corruption in our government.